In this video, we're going to talk about actually feeding sugar syrup. I mean, it's one of the things that you have to get right in beekeeping. It's really obvious when you don't, because you come back and colonies have starved. Um, because most of us take the honey crop off, we rely on feeding sugar, sugar syrup in the autumn to give them stores over the winter and in the spring. Typically, colonies don't starve in the winter because the colonies are contracting and they need less and less syrup as long as they've got stores going in. But as soon as the, it looks like spring, most of our bees think the nectar flow is about to start, they expand rapidly and you have to start feeding. So, as I say, you know when, you get it, when you've got it wrong when you come to a colony in the, come into an apiary and there's dead colonies. To get the best out of feed, sh feeding sugar syrup, if you can do it, warm syrup's better than cold syrup. Um, cold syrup cools the hive down quite a bit when you put it on, so you get a better result with warm. For stools, you're feeding concentrated syrup. Um, but you can later on in the spring, as long as the colonies have got enough stores, go to a lighter syrup, which will stimulate them to grow even further. But you have to remember, you're going to have to feed a whole lot more light syrup than you do strong syrup. And people have got that wrong. They've just fed the same amount. The colony's growing really fast, and even though they're feeding, they're starving to death. Now, the other thing about it is you probably want to make sure that the colonies always have at least two to three frames of honey or stores. Um, or you've got this feeding program to make sure that they never go short during the season. So, problems feeding sugar syrup. The first one, and again it's a problem if you've got a single box brood nest, and that's overfeeding. If you feed too much sugar syrup, it actually starts filling up the cells and the queen doesn't have room to lay anymore. And you can actually slow down colony development by doing that. A single queen can lay out a complete brood box if she's got the space to do so. So that's the problem. Underfeeding, obviously, is a problem. Quite often we see drowning, and that's because people have used feeders but haven't put anything like bracken or wood in there so that the bees can float on the way through. The other issue around it is that it can ferment. The light syrup ferments very, very easily, so you have to be very careful how long you're storing it for it. When you make, up, make it up, how long it takes for the bees to consume it as well. Because if it's sitting in the feeder for too long, it can ferment there and you'll kill bees that way. The other issue with it is if you add anything to the sugar syrup, like these additives that, that beekeepers add to, add to sugar to try and improve honeybee nutrition, they too can make the sugar syrup ferment. And again, you have to be careful with it. The other thing to take note of is that you don't want to feed large amounts of sugar syrup to wheat colonies. If the colonies only got two three, or three, three frames of brood, they're not going to lead, need four or five litres of syrup fed to them. So you need to be sensitive to how strong the colony is for what you're going to feed it. The other way that beekeepers feed sugar syrup is they actually use dry raw sugar. So this is put into a special feeder on top of a hive or even put into a top feeder. And it's not enough usually to stop a colony star star starving, but if it's there over the winter, they will slowly work through it and, and then consume less of their stores. So it so was a technique that was very popular in New Zealand 10 or 15 years ago, but it's kind of gone out of favour, but it's, worth, it's one that's worthwhile considering. And it might be worth trying it on half, half the hives and a couple of apiaries for you to see whether there's actually benefit in doing it now. If you're in South America, you'd be actually, instead of feeding sucrose, they quite often feed fruct fructose, which they swear by, and they say give better results. We, we don't have a good cheap sauce in New Zealand, unfortunately, so we can't try it. But beekeepers typically feed liquid sugar that's industrial raw sugar, which is cheaper, or white sugar. The I say the advantage with industrial raw is it's cheaper, but the disadvantage is that it's actually got an odor with it. So it can create robbing. Um, so if you feed a colony industrial raw sugar, the bees will very soon start be flying around your truck looking to see where it came from, because they can smell it. But white sugar has no scent at all. So as long as all the containers you're using are clean, you can feed it and bees can't work out where it's coming from. So it's much less likely to cause robbing. 